All right, welcome back, guys. I've got a really cool video for you today. Uh, one of the subscribers, Michael, shared one of his pieces of art with me, and uh, um, I told him that I would, uh, you know, take it and make some changes to it and show you guys what I would do. And he said he's okay with that, so let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna import the image from my computer, which I've uploaded to my Dropbox. So this is also a mini tutorial on how to do that. Uh, so you hit image, import from. Here you can choose your iCloud thing. I don't have my iCloud set up, but if I go to locations, I did connect my Dropbox. And here is my personal Dropbox, and we have Michael's piece right here. So when you press it, it'll import it, and it already uploads the correct size. It's a JPEG, so it's not layered. If it was PNG, it would have had you know, the proper layers. If the background was transparent, it would have stayed transparent. So I'm going to create a new layer. Actually, I'm going to duplicate his piece and I'm going to paint uh, on a new layer above that so then I can collapse it and toggle them back and forth. So uh, we have what we have here um, is typically the stage that you get to when you've got your line art and you're happy with it and then you just color fill the line art. So what would I do different um, to make the piece, you know, a little bit more my style, I guess. And uh, right off the bat, I think one of the biggest things that I would do from this stage on is uh, focus on on getting some uh, shadows in there. So I'm going to bump up my brush size a little bit. You see how the, the difference in light and dark here is somewhat minimal. You're going to want to push that a lot. And even though, you know, the piece is more of like a just a character and not really a full background or anything um, I, I still strongly believe that you know you you need to show more contrast and that's a really that's a really big thing for a lot of newer artists that I've seen um, you know sorry Michael if I'm gonna be firing shots at you it's all for the purpose of you know hopefully improving and um, you know and if you disagree with with what I have to say that's completely fine too but anyways, uh, I'm going to just push the lights and the darks in, uh, in separate directions. And we're going to use like a nice little uh, one of the rule, the rule brush that comes with the new Procreate. And um, the reason I'm using it is it's going to give us a little bit of nice texture. You know, maybe, maybe you didn't want this thing to have texture. You want it to be like the Pepto-Bismol Saurus and... Uh, you know, you wanted to keep it all smooth and super pink, but I'm changing your ideas and making them mine, man. So, yeah. All right, we're going to do a quick shadow. We can also drop a shadow on the ground afterwards. That might not be a bad idea. And uh, you see all these black lines. Uh, honestly, one way to... This is just a suggestion. There's absolutely nothing wrong with keeping outlines on your piece. It's, you know, very comic book style and a lot of artists do it uh, for me I prefer to get rid of line art eventually and uh, you can easily quite easily do that by keeping your line art on a separate layer and then when you alpha lock that line art by swiping to the to the right uh, you just grab whatever color is right by that line art and fill it in so the line art becomes you know purple in this case or whatever color um, it is you know that the the line art is pretty much covering um, and you just use logic to on where to put you know the shadows and stuff here we see that the front of the leg is lit up and it shouldn't be because if our light source is somewhere above then the front of the leg does not really get much light just to make sure that, oh how I'm layer locked no wonder it's not adding anymore I'm, I'm thinking like okay why aren't these gaps being filled in and uh, for areas I'm gonna go even darker for this area down here near the foot because even less light would would get in there that's pretty much gonna be the darkest area on the uh, in the image for me I'm gonna try to keep this video really short so that it's watchable you know honestly I think I might not even finish the how to draw dynamically um, series because they're just they're just too long it's hard to, you know, talk with enough enthusiasm and all that for, for that long. 
And uh, notice I'm not even using any light colors just yet. So, so far we've only, we've only used what Michael had and a darker tone uh, dar or darker hues, whatever. All right, quickly fill in the leg. The other, the opposite leg, I like that you went a little bit darker there. Um, I've seen a lot of artists do that where they go almost black, on, especially if you're working with ink. They'll go like full black for the other half of the character um, on mechs and stuff. You know, they'll just drop in a silhouette of the foot. And that that's a nice way to avoid having to draw in like a, a ton of uh, different effects and, you know, any it basically simplifies the piece and, and removes any confusion that a viewer might have. All right. So I, I don't know if, uh, you know, depending, I guess, on how, how popular this is, you know, maybe I'll accept more drawings from other people and, and see if I can change them up and add my own flair to them or just give advice, you know, quick critiques could be fun. So for the mouth, I want the mouth to have a little a little shading where where the lip is being sort of hugged by you know the, the lower jaw. I guess this thing has an underbite or is it overbite? I don't really know. I haven't had one, so I don't know the term, but I'm sure somebody who wore braces or something to to fix their bite would know. So you, you see what I did there? I just took a slightly darker color and went above the eyes. So now they look a little bit indented. This doesn't always work for every creature. You know, you don't want every creature to have indented eyes. For example, something like a frog might, you might uh, prefer to have, uh, I don't know, something lighter, like no eyelids or, you know what I mean? Or the eyes are popping out of the sides of the face. So here I'm gonna remove this black line because honestly, with proper lighting, you won't need a contour line like that. It'll it'll kind of fix itself and and make it be known that uh, yeah, that is indeed the tail that's being um, turned upwards. Okay, I think that's close enough to you know it, that's enough to show you guys sort of like the changes I would make. I would obviously spend a little bit of time cleaning everything up, getting rid of all of the line art. And actuality, the first thing I would do is I would remove the white from the rest of the layer so that I would put this guy on a separate layer. And unfortunately, because this is a JPEG, I don't have the luxury of starting out without a background. Um, if I did, then, you know, that would speed things up. If I was transferring a file from Photoshop or something, I would be sure to save it without a background so that uh, it's on an independent layer. Now we're not done yet because we could still add highlights and that's what I'm about to do next. So I'm just gonna leave some of this line art. And another thing I'm going to do is add a little dimple on the tip of the, on the edge of the mouth. So we're gonna grab this darker color. And now we go to the opposite side. So we went down here, you know, where it's more saturated. And when we go lighter, we want less saturation, but uh, you know, you still want to make sure you go lighter. We're going to go even lighter. I accidentally dropped a little, little dot up at the top, right? So I undid that real quick. I kind of want to push the color a little bit more. I think that's already too white. Let's let's make sure we leave some color in there. I'm going to undo it real quick, but basically uh, it's the same idea again. Increase the brush size a little bit. So we are going to call this the Pepto-Bismosaurus because that's kind of an awesome name. It's actually, you know, how they get, how you make Pepto-Bismol. You have to hunt these things down and extract it from, from their skin. Their squishy purpley skin. Okay, and now we can increase the brush size since we're on the side of the 
this lovable giant. You know, you can uh, also like risk adding hands and stuff. Definitely play around with um, the possibilities because there's so much you can do. In the tail, we will uh, try to avoid over lightening it, <laughs> over exposing it, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. So we're gonna kind of keep the core of the tail a slightly different color. And now, finally, let's add some shadow. So for shadow, we'll just do like some softer gray, not not completely on, go to the right on the scale. And we're just gonna put down a basic line of where we think the, the shadow might fall. Actually, I'm gonna undo that and I'm just going to create a new layer where I can multiply it on. Uh, this will avoid, um, avoid me graying out some of the areas that I don't want gray. It will make the feet a little bit darker though. So let's hit up a almost a midway uh, midway tone and I can uh, lower the opacity when I'm done. So actually I'm just gonna fill the whole foot in and then I'll just erase the parts out because it's gonna be easier to get this this solid um, cast shadow across. It's gonna be faster than if I you know, struggle to do it uh, the other way. All right, airbrush, just grab a soft brush. Sure, it's pretty large. Uh, that looks kind of nasty. Let's see if we can quickly come up with something better. Um, there's the element brush, and then we can grab the clouds, maybe. Lower the opacity on that. Mm, I don't like that either, but the cool thing is is that we have, um, let's put this straight, and I want to blur it. We have the, the quick tools that we can use. Okay, that's, that's fine, you know, see, like, Nothing special at all, but um, it, it's doable for a shadow. And and having a small shadow like this is important because it plants your object into the scene and kind of uh, just gives it a non-floaty look, you know, unless you're doing a bird or something that's hovering. I would recommend to spend some time on a shadow. It's, it's not too difficult. And again, if it was on a separate layer, it'd be a lot easier. All right, so let's take a quick look at the difference. Oh, and I guess just for uh, the giggles, we can do a texture brush over the top. I want something that's going to give it, I guess, a skin-like look. Maybe we do... Hmm. There's a lot of little effects here that you could play around with. Zombie skin, I bet that's going to look really garbage. So... Let's do this. I'm going to select the contents of, of our new drawing. And then we're going to probably put it in something like, whoa, not overlay. Oh, I guess I, I stayed on the same, same uh, layer, so that's my bad. Quickly undo go to that new layer even though we have the contents of a separate completely separate layer selected uh normally oh man it crashed it shouldn't have canceled anything i don't think we lost any information regarding uh, regarding our drawing all right as you can see now we have this slight texture um i would probably probably grab a soft uh, airbrush now and I'm not worried about losing some of the details. You don't want uh, that much strength on it. And you just go along and get rid of the sharp edges. 
to hint at a little bit of this texture. And you can see here's what the texture does to the image. So let's just merge it down. And then let's merge the shadow down as well. And uh, voila, here is the difference between my piece of Michael's, <laughs> my rendition of Michael's piece. Oh, uh, I'm actually missing one more very important thing that I would definitely, definitely recommend doing uh, before we take a final look at the before and afters, and that's highlighting this lip. So because the lip is sticking out, you kind of want to make that one of the monster's features. You know, why not, why not uh, point to it a little bit? Kind of, kind of have this thing pride itself in its giant, giant chin. I guess another thing you could do is for the eyes, you could soften the the highlights so we just get a slight rim light over there and then we grab I don't know a small round brush and then we drop in some more reflection so instead of doing like a simple dot you do something a little bit high, more complex and it'll it'll give it more detail alright I'm done I'm done that's it we're gonna keep the video hopefully pretty short so here's the difference, right? We've added shadows, we've added some highlights. You probably normally would also put a little bit of highlights into the thigh and you know maybe even some above the claws on the feet. But yeah, this is basically what I would do. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Michael, thanks for letting me use your piece. Let me letting me use you as an example. And uh, you know, maybe I'll do more in the future depending on how you guys react to it. But yeah, I hope you like it and uh, you know, as always, uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one, guys.